In addition, she is known to have helped hundreds of coaches unlock their true confidence and use their authentic voices to grow their business. She is also a wife. Um, and so yeah, let's welcome Molly Trotter Gomez. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here and it's amazing to be able to speak in a room full of global leaders. This is one of my favorite places to be. So when I got asked to be here um, on a Saturday morning, I live in California here in the States. So it is 10 o'clock in the morning my time. And I said there is no place I'd rather be than to be able to speak into some leaders. And I love the topic of maximizing your potential because I feel like this is so timely. It can honestly be timely really at any time, but one of the things that I know that was impressed upon my heart to really share is there's so many leaders out here that want to give you the shortcuts. I want to give you, get a little bit of this, get a little of that. How can we get ahead? I want to create an environment here today where it's going to create something that's long lasting, that's sustainable to really actually maximize and have a long lasting impact with your purpose through the potential that is inside of you. So I want to start this morning of uh, with a question. I want to start this morning with a question. And so for those that are note takers, um, I'm definitely a note taker. I'm always having a pen, a paper, sticky notes, anything to be able to jot down the epiphanies, the breakthroughs, the points that really come up. So I encourage you to do that with me here uh, this morning or this afternoon, whatever time it is where you guys are at. But here's the question that I want to pose to you is how many of you believe that there is more that you can give in your business in your relationships and in your life right now that there's more in the tank there's more that you can give be honest with yourself we get so focused when it comes to focusing on what we're going after we get so focused on other people that we actually lose sight of ourselves here's what i want to really dig in on at that point so often we're like, I want to go help other people. I want to have a big impact. I want to help my spouse. I want to help my loved ones. We get so focused on helping other people, which is a great thing because we want to be able to do something that's bigger than ourselves, outside of ourselves. But we end up losing ourselves in the process. And today I want to take you on a journey to really be able to find yourself to maximize that potential, again, to make this long lasting. So for those that are brave, I want you to actually close your eyes and imagine something with me here to kick off this morning. Imagine your ideal situation. Where are you living? Who are you with? You know, what does your life look like right now? And even as you imagine it, you know, you can open up your eyes, jot some things down if you need to be able to take these notes. But like, what does that look like? Now imagine that there is a bridge between you and those things. Imagine that bridge. Here's you and here are those things. And you have that separation. And the only way to get across that bridge, there's actually only one way to get across that bridge. And that way to get across that bridge is not by anybody else, but honestly, it's by you, your two legs. I know that may sound like, well, yeah, obviously I gotta walk across the bridge, duh. But I wanna share with you how to get across that bridge. I want to share with you where you are now to where you want to be, what happens in the in-between, and what most people miss. And this is why they either have paralyzed potential or they never reach their potential. is because they let the where I am now, the bridge in between, and where I want to be, the in-between gets, gets really fuzzy. And the reason why I believe it gets so fuzzy is because so many people are focusing on, here's the shortcuts. Just do what I do, follow this roadmap. And yes, we want to be able to learn strategy. We want to be able to learn how can I get there faster? Our human nature is let's hurry up and speed up the process, right? But so many people get focused on the end result that they actually miss the journey. And the journey is more valuable a lot of the time than the end result, as crazy as that sounds. Because when you closed your eyes or you were thinking of where you want to be, you were like, that is so valuable to me is that that's all I can think about. That's what I sleep, eat, breathe. That's all I need. That's all I want. But the journey is actually the biggest part that's going to make this sustainable. So I want to share a brief story. Um, obviously, as we opened up today, you heard a little bit of my background. Uh, my background, uh, I became a news anchor and reporter here in the United States. And I got into that because I really wanted to tell people stories. 
honestly, if I draw back even more, I wanted to do something that nobody else that I knew had ever done before. I always was growing up and seeing people just kind of jump into jobs because they were something to get paid, to pay the bills, to have something just that they can depend on, right? Because a job is dependable, and I put air quotes because you got to define dependable. That's a whole other topic. But when I saw people just kind of settling into something that it just worked for them, or I just get paid and it's just enough, I was like, I don't, I'm not a settler. I've never settled into anything. I've always had the mindset, even when I was a child, of I want more. I see what's in front of me, but how can I get more? Not out of like a selfish way, but I just knew there was so much more out of life. And I always looked at eyes, or I always looked at the world with my eyes wide open. And I believe that's the Lord kind of gave me some bigger eyes where I'm just like, wow, like I really want big eyes to see. I want to actually see, not just walk through life like a zombie. I'm here, but I'm not present. I'm not living. I want to actually see things. And the Lord really gave me eyes to see at a very young age. So I always wanted more. And I saw family members and friends just kind of get stuck and be okay with that. I was never okay with that. So at a young age, I would honestly say I started to feel this in um, grade school as a child and it grew more in middle school and high school and of course into college and beyond. But I realized that my potential was at risk. And when I realized my potential was at risk, I really had to actually take a step back and ask myself, who am I hanging around? Who am I listening to? Who am I letting speak into me? Because that is so important, your environment. And we're going to get to that a little bit later today about the environment that you set yourself in. And you may have heard something similar to this already, but it's so important because so many people have this paralyzed potential or unreached potential because they're stuck in environments of people they love and care about. But these people are literally speaking death over their dreams and visions that God's given to you, not them. And I can speak from personal experience having friends and family, what are you doing? I don't get it. Why would you risk that? Why would you go from here to here? Specifically, when I was in the news, I actually got fired from my last news job because of a transformation photo that I put up. What does that mean? Um, I got into a health and wellness business to be able to create um, some additional income. Because as a news anchor and reporter, as you're growing in that profession, as much as people think you get paid good money, you get paid Horribly, horribly. I had to open up three credit cards in order to survive like a normal person. It was awful. So I decided to pick up a, a side hustle, if you will. And I had an incredible physical transformation. They basically, my news anchor or my news uh, director said, we don't like that, take it down. And I took a stand for myself and I said, no. The world needs to see people that are going to actually pour into themselves, prioritize themselves, because they need to be the change that others need to see. Well, corporate America doesn't like it when you challenge them, when they tell you to do something and you don't do it. I just, I stood my ground. I knew in that moment, I'm not, I'm not budging. And I didn't know fully what was at risk, but I just wasn't going to budge. Long story short, they ended up firing me over it. I will tell you, it was one of the most heartbreaking, how could you do this to me? But one of the most liberating, I'm finally free. Even though I went to school for that profession, I gave my blood, sweat, and tears for five years in that profession. Waking up at one o'clock in the morning to go live on the news for hours each and every day to work overtime, to get paid not a very good living, to be fired over something that would inspire people. But at the end of the day, I felt so liberated to get out of that industry because if they were so bothered by me trying to help other people, I said, why would I want to be in this environment? So at a young age, watching people settle, being in my career that I went to college for, that I, I studied for, that I got into, and it's very hard to get into the news industry, to be let go because I want to be able to help people at a deeper level, really showed me I have to really protect who I surround myself with. One of the things that I've realized as I've grown in this entrepreneurship journey, now being a full-time entrepreneur seven plus years, it has been so eye-opening because one of the things that I don't believe people talk enough about is the importance of the potential and how to reach it. And the environment you set yourself in, why is that, why that is so important? 
there's so many of us that are having energy leaks in our life. Energy leaks. People that are taking energy from you that could be distributed into your dreams, working towards those visions that God has given you, working toward that end goal. But you give energy to people that are just sprinkling or even dousing their debt, their doubt all over you because of their own insecurities and fears. And it may come off as, I love you and I want to help you, but at the end of the day, they're just, they don't know how else to project, but to project on you to hopefully get you to come back to be where they are. Because when people see you rise to your potential, they immediately start feeling like either I'm not enough, I need to be doing something else, who do they think they are? Like there's all these things that start to come up and that when you rise to your potential, you're in the right environment getting poured into by the right people. There's going to be people that you love and care about around you that are going to have a problem with that. As hard as that is. But in order for you to elevate to where God wants you to be, to where you need to go, you have to separate yourself from some people. Now I think you have to completely cut them off unless it's warranted, but you've got to separate yourself in order to elevate because if you don't, you're paralyzed, your potential will not be paralyzed because you're not staying, choose to stay stuck because maybe you really love that person. You see the best in them, you see the potential in them and you want to pull it out. But it's not enough for us to want to pull it out of other people and want it more for them, they have to want it for themselves. So people don't talk about the importance of potential enough because some people are like, well, I don't want to sound like I'm boasting. I don't want to sound like I'm better than. Well, the, the question is, is do you believe that's true? Do you believe that you're better Do you better than others? Do you believe that you're, you're being boastful? And if the answer is no, then we get to eradicate that lie instantly. But here's the thing, when you start walking in your potential, you will be gawked at, you will be laughed at, you will be ridiculed. When it comes to pioneering something, people will never understand or cheer for a pioneer. People that aren't pioneers won't cheer for that person because they don't get it. Why would you do that? Why would you go against the grain? Well, if we think of the innovations that are right in front of us, like take our phones, for example, if somebody didn't pioneer this, this thing right here, many of us wouldn't be able to connect today. Wouldn't be able to do so many amazing things from this device. But I'm sure when phones came out, people were like, this is a crazy idea. It's never going to work. But guess what? When people see it starting to work, they want to jump in too. Oh, that's a great idea. That's awesome. I want to get in on it. Now that you've pioneered the way. It's like if you're going to go into the jungle or the rainforest or something and there's no clear path to where you want to go, you better have a machete with you to cut down the branches, the leaves, everything in front of you. Otherwise, how are you going to get through? How are you going to know your way back? How are you going to forge a path for others? That starts with you. Remember being on that bridge from where you are to where you want to be. This is the journey that you have to be able to take action in and go out on your own to really dig in. Not that we have to do it alone, but it's up to you to take the action and no one else can take it for you. But where does it start? It starts by, first of all, you. It starts by building and developing yourself and your vision that God has given to you. And one of the things that I want to say is stop consulting other people about the vision God gave to you because they don't see it. They don't get it. They don't see it. You get to be able to be like, you know what, even if I'm doing this on my own, it's game time. It's time to be able to do this because if not now, then when? And if not you, then who? Because guess what? If you want to skip on the vision that God has given you, he's going to go find somebody else that is going to be like, I'm ready. I'm going to do it. He gives you the free will. You'll press into that. But then once you have gone in there, you've been building yourself, developing yourself, because again, it's about you changing yourself in order to be able to change the world. So often we want the world to change, and then yeah, we'll get to it. It starts with you, because everybody is waiting for somebody else to go first. That's true. My question to you is, are you waiting for somebody else to go first to give you permission to step into what you are called to do? When people start to latch onto your vision, oh, that's a good idea, I want in, now that you've done all the groundwork, right? People will always want to be a part of something that is bigger and greater than themselves, always. That's why people attach themselves to a sports team. You know, here in America, people love sports. They attach themselves to a sports team, and that can be somebody's identity. They attach themselves to, you know, a vision, if they're an entrepreneur, like this is, 
my everything. They attach themselves to a church, a community. People want to be a part of something bigger. They want to know what they do and what they're a part of is bigger and that it matters. We all have that inside of us. But I want to ask you these questions and I encourage you to write these down. What's getting in your way? What's limiting you? Do you know? Do you know what's getting in your way? Do you know what's limiting you? And if you don't know, how will you be able to remove it? How will you be able to remove it? A big part of how it is that I love to speak to people, um, one of my giftings is reflection. So often people will come on in a setting like this or in a room and speak to other people and they're just talking at you. My biggest goal for anybody that I speak with is how can I help you drill down deeper to actually discover the root of that desire, of that fear, of that limiting belief, of that thing that's holding you back. Because so often we stay up here surface level but we don't drill down deep enough to really discover where that root is coming from. And the more we do that, the more we go on that journey with ourselves and don't lose ourselves and just trying to have this big impact for everybody else, the more that we actually discover who we are, the purpose and what we're doing, and we have that fulfillment that we're all longing for. One thing you should know is that purpose and potential go hand in hand. You've probably heard something like that before. But I really want to share with you about the, the gravity of knowing your purpose. And some of you may be sitting in this room and, and maybe you understand your purpose. Maybe some of you are like, I fully understand my purpose. I know exactly where I'm supposed to go. But to be honest, most people don't. Or a lot of people question their purpose because they haven't taken the time to drill down deep to figure out your why. And when it comes to reflection, why is a great question. Just keep asking why until you get there. And you'll know when you get there. You'll know when you get it up, either just in that sitting or over time. Because you'll be able to have more understanding. Because in order to reach that potential that's inside of you, you've got to really be able to, again, like I said, drill down deep, have that reflection point, and then understand why are you even doing 